Hi, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie, and I'm Debbie. Today we're reading for Monday through Thursday, January 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th. Now, when I'm doing Monday through Thursday, I use my Radley Valentine decks, my Archangel Power Tarot cards, my Guardian Angel Tarot cards. I will pull one from Inspirational Wisdom from uh, Francis Monroe and Judy Mestrangelo, and I use my Emily Anderson crystal deck. Now, this is the introduction. This is going to be on all the videos. So if you come in for your specific sign or if you cross watch and you see this, it's the same for the beginning, just for the beginning. But what I will do is I will put down there in the descriptions um, the timestamp for when you can just jump over the introduction and go straight to your video. All right. Now, the other thing I will be doing is in this introduction, I will be using my Weight Rider tarot cards and my Colette Baron Read the Good Tarot. Um, basically, what I do with this is I am just reading for what's going on in the world. What is the world's energies like right now? Anything we need to be watching out for. Um, so, it, you know, I kind of feel it's an important piece, but, you know, that's for you to decide. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself to God, um, Holy Spirit, Source, and just say, what do you need? What do you need to say? What is needed to be said? Um, so, like I said, general reading, take what you like, leave the rest. May or may not resonate. couple of things. We do have the Chinese New Year or, you know, the starting on January 22nd. It is the year of the rabbit or in some of the Asian cultures, the year of the cat. Very similar or if not the same characteristics. Now, what I was reading and I posted it that it actually starts that piece of the year actually will start, I think it was February 4th, but I put that into my, um, you know, under our Just Community page. So that was a couple of days ago. So you might want to take a look at that. So we do have the new moon on the 21st, th this happening on the 22nd. It's still not changed over what the year is all about, but it's still new opportunities, new new um, possibilities also. Now on the 22nd, 23rd, we also have Uranus going from retrograde to direct. So right now it's in a very slow-mo um, motion. Retrogrades aren't, the planets don't actually go backwards, but, and I loved, I loved this from one of our subscribers commented that the world just wobbles a little bit, so it gives us a new and fresh perspective. So it is going direct. Um, all the planets will then be direct. Um, like I said, Uranus is going a little bit slow motion right now. So the, the uh, expect the unexpected energies are intense. We had Mercury just go um, direct also. So there, you know, there, we call, uh, there's a little bit of a shadow that goes, you know, goes beyond. Um, so we have a little bit of that shadow. And Mars, what was it uh, um, earlier, earlier, it went direct also. So we have all the planets going direct. The thing about it, when I talk about direct, is it's more a case that these planets will do what they do. However, the environment is changing around them. You know, I told you that Saturn will be visiting, will be going into Pisces. Um, Pisces is the last um, season of the astrological year. So in Pisces, we've been going through the age of Pisces for the last 2,000 years. That's about religion and business government. And, you know, I call it the business of religion, the rules and regulations. Pisces is a very deep um, introverted energy. So it does have a lot of dreams and fantasies, but there's another part of it that does have these rules and regulations. However, we have Saturn, which is the father of rules and regulations, um, going into Pisces. So I'm, I'm looking at some big major cleanup major cleanup energies for the next what whatever it goes, two years, 23 months, 24 months, um, and that will start in March. And then, of course, I'm, yeah, and then, of course, I've been talking about how Pluto, which has been in Capricorn, and it's all, you know, since 2008, for three months, again in March, um, 
will be going into Aquarius. Aquarius has thoughts, has, you know, his friendships, is about the people, is about new ideas. So, you know, this is, you know, when, when Pluto was in Capricorn, there was a moment about a, was it a year ago, year, year ago, um, was it two years, year ago, two years, whatever, that um, Pluto and Capricorn was in the direct position or the same position it was in 1776, which was part of that revolutionary war energy. So as we go into Pluto going into Aquarius, there's the rebuild, there's the new ideas, there's the possibilities, but it only goes there for three months. But like I'm saying, all these planets are going direct. Uranus does the back and forth, you know, um, you know, goes direct once a year, goes, um, you know, re um, retro, you know, it, it does this at least once a year. Um, Mercury does it three to four times, you know, Mars every, what is it, every 26 months. The thing is about it is when these change, or when our perspectives of these planets change, things look different. But remember, they can be doing the same thing, but their environment changes, okay? So they're doing it in a new environment. So even if they've been doing it, Mercury, like I said, three to four times a year, now their environment is changing. So it, it is all new, fresher energy too. So I told you 22nd, 23rd, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet here. Uranus goes direct. Um, the 25th, we have Aquarius sextiling with Jupiter, which is in Aries. That is a positive energy. Uh, so that'd be the 24th, 25th. And then on the 26th, 27th, Venus enters Pisces. So we got, you know, uh, Venus is about emotional relationships. Again, we have that, um, that dreamy energy around us of Pisces. But then remember, Pisces, Pisces can be strict too. Pisces can be, this is the way it needs to be done. But Pisces is also the great manifester. So it could be a time to manifest when Venus goes into Pisces. It could be a time to manifest that relationship you're looking for. All right, so here we go. Two cards popped out of the desk. This is, and I'm not sure, I'm kind of feeling like maybe it's these two, but we'll, I mean this way, but we'll see. We will see what we will see here. Let's see what else we might have with the Weight Rider te um, deck here. And do this. Oops. Um, anytime that there is a shift in moon, remember new moon is about all the possibilities. It's new seasons. Um, during Aquarius season, we will have the Leo full moon. I believe, too, that this new moon is a super moon, so it's a very close. Um, it's a cl The moon is closer in the orbit to the Earth than, you know, before. Anyway, so let's see what we've got here for our third card. What's going on, higher power? What's going on in the world? Okay, first card is balance balance so now we have basically in the tarot and you know i tell people if you watch me long enough um i i explain the cards and you'd be able to read your own cards um you know maybe not with the intuition but the intuition will come but you know if you watch me because i give the explanation so the this is pentacle energy pentacle energy is earth energy money energy it is associated with capricorn taurus and virgo energy now we still have mercury is still in capricorn uranus is going direct in taurus now Virgo's just kind of chilling out a little bit right over there and and i think virgo energy if you have any virgo in your natal chart you know i think that that's kind of like well we get to business but keep your eyes off of me Anyway, we've got a two. Two is crossroads, choices, decisions. It's coming together. You can see that he is, you know, I'm not quite sure if he's necessarily juggling or if he's just trying to keep things in motion. But there is this money energy, um, money, job, career could be home. There is this money energy that's just being kind of, I'm kind of getting this, um, you know, pay Peter to, or rob Peter to pay Paul um, you know, just have to kind of keep things in balance, not necessarily um, as, you know, as exciting as I want it to be, but, but, you know, it, you know, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of stress, there's a little bit of tension with this, with this energy. However, if you think of this as a rubber band, nothing is being really pulled on this. 
it's just kind of it's just kind of um, waving around. It's a little bit unbalanced. He's standing on one foot. The waves are there, but it's not overwhelming. That's not overwhelming. So if you're feeling overwhelming stress, um, at the you know if you're feeling that there's a lot of stress with the money situation, which I'm not going to say there isn't, do not let it overwhelm you. Um, keep your eye, you know, here. Now I think that about a week ago, when one of my introductions, I said, watch the money. This is a balance energy. This is trying to balance the energies, balance the money. In some ways, he's doing a little bit of a juggling act again, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul. But at the same time, it's not, um, you know, I just feel like he's not out of control at this moment. So even though it may feel out of control, there, it, it's really not out of control. Um, it just, it's just the anxiety that appears or that um, comes through with this. Okay, so let's go on. Next card. So here we have the wand energy. Like I said, there's four energies. There is earth. There is fire. Now, fire is our Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. It's passionate, burning, determined. Remember, we have Jupiter in Aries right now. And Jupiter wants to provide. Jupiter wants good things. And Aries is about action and action steps. Let's get this moving. Uh, Leo, like I said, we do have, I think it's the 4th or 5th of February, we have that full moon. So Leo energy will be starting to get stronger, passionate, burning, determined, very, very committed. So the court cards have two, have dual energies. This one, um, the page has the earth as the underlying energy. The knight has um, the fire as the underlying energy. Wands is fire. Wand, you know, so this is uh, fire, fire energy. This is moving forward energy. This is not, you know, this is like, okay, I've got my plan. Don't stop me. This is, this is not being contained. Okay, it's not like the air energy when you see the air, the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is kind of like, I don't give a darn anymore. I'm just going to go do it. The Knight of Wands, the fire, fire energy does have a bit of a plan, is going into action, is making, you know, it's a very calculated risk and is not really taking a no for an answer. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Now we have the Page of Wands. So we have the money. And we have the fire. We have the earth, and we have the um, the you know the compulsion. The I have to do this. I have to do this. So here, the page of wands is a combination of both. Underlying is that earth. Um, overlying is that fire. Um, so the page generally is a messenger. So you might be here. You know, the world. There might be some news about money and struggles, and yet do not be a worried or afraid type of thing. But the pay, you know, so there is that underlying of the earth, money, job, career type of stuff. But you've also got that commitment, that passion, that I really want to make some changes. So there's something happening between the money and the and the fire. Something between the stability and the, um, you know, the commitment. So the page wants to get started, wants to make some changes, wants to go forward. Generally, the page is usually about a, um, or is has a, a connection with a new job, a new career, a new way of making money, a new path in that earth energy. And then the wands is passionate. The wands just says, yes, this is what I want going on. So there's a little bit of this balancing, this, you know, this, this, this juggling of this money energy. Um, you know, it, it does have some choices with us too. Do I, do I do this? Do I not do this? So we have this, you know, this uh, up and down type of feeling, but it really kind of puts the world in gear and kind of says, no, I'm not necessarily liking where I'm at. We need to make some changes. We need to be passionate. We need to, uh, we need it and we need it kind of now. Okay. Whatever that meant. Like I said, uh, I have learned to, or I, have, I still am learning to just deliver what comes through and not try to make too much sense of it. So let's see what we've got with the Colette Baron a read. What we have here. Please, please, please remember to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell. You don't know how much that really helps. Um, you know, it just, 
Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with YouTube, but they're just, it's just not necessarily uh, working out the way I would like this to work out. Okay, let's see what we have here. Here we go. Higher power, what else would you like to say? What's going on in the world? What is going on in the world? Now remember, anything reversed is usually strong energy. That's how I read the cards. Here we go. Okay, now we have the Queen of Water. So the Queen stands in her royalty. The Queen is, um, you know, is, is somebody who you do not take advantage of. The queen, of, uh, the queen is somebody who makes, the, makes a lot of rules. She does it with her heart, but she also does it with her thoughts and her mind. Now, water energy is Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. Remember I was saying that Venus will be going into, did I say it was Pisces? Yes. Oh, no. Was it Pisces? Let me go back and check that a second. Was it Pisces that Venus is going into? Um, on the, yes, Venus is entering into Pisces. So there's a lot of emotional energy with that. There's a lot of loving energy. There's a lot of, um, you know, clearing out of the, you know, clearing the rules in a relationship energy. So the queen's energy underlying is water. So here we have fire, fire, and here we have water, water. Uh, she is very intuitive, very loving, very caring energy. Um, she does have a little, she does get a little stressed out with what's going around because sometimes she doesn't necessarily feel as she's in control and she's a queen. She should feel in control. But the, this queen is always a little bit on that shakier side. Well, I'm saying for right now, this queen feels a little bit of the shakiness, feels a lot of that emotion, but also knows that with love, anything and all things are possible. So, We've got interesting energy. We have a lot of earth energy. Um, we have earth energy. We have a lot of fire energy. And now we have that water energy. The only energy that we did not talk about is our sword energy. And that is also our air energy. And that is our Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Now Libra's kind of taken a little bit of a break too. Um, don't worry. They'll soon be in the game again. Uh, and also Venus does have a good association with Libra too. So anyway, air energy uh, is your thought processes, thinking things through, making plans, also hearing news. And we do have Saturn still in Aquarius and we still have um, Mars still in Gemini. So interesting times, interesting times. But remember, we are, we're changing it's all, you know, these things may happen very scheduled, but the other environment, the environmental, um, you know, the scenery changes. We're kind of, it's, it changes, but it's all in a different, it's, in, it, it's changing again. It's changing, changing, changing. And I do feel, you know, like I said, with Saturn going into Pisces, oh, I feel there's going to be a lot of cleanup um, there's going to be a lot of cleanup, especially in the business of religion and government. Okay, so again, please, please, please like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell for notifications. It really helps. I do appreciate you doing that. And right now, we will start your videos. Oh, if you're just watching the introduction, always know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye. Hello, my Sages, and how are you doing? Well, I've been talking about you and calling you my adventurers right now, so I, th I don't know, a new adventure? I don't know, let go of a lot of the stuff that's holding you back, let go of a lot of uh, things that aren't necessarily healthy for you, but, and again, it's just like there's new opportunities. Okay, we got a major, ah! We have the leap of faith and a new opportunity coming. Okay, my adventurers, let's see what else we might have going on. Okay, so here we, and again, we've been having a lot of major arcana cards coming out for this week. So again, I will say this, not, you know, if you look at your, um, your natal chart, you may want to cross watch on some of these too, because there's been a lot that's, uh, that's been popping up. They've been very strong readings. Anyway, let's go on here. 
So we have three cards. Nothing is reversed, but these are very strong energies here. So there's a new work opportunity coming for you. The night underlying energy, because remember, court cards have two energies. So the night underlying energy is fire. It is your energy, also Aries and Gemini, I mean, and Leo energy. So now Aries, remember, Jupiter's in Aries. So, you know, there's opportunities all around with Jupiter. And Aries wants to take action and wants to move on these opportunities. We also have a new moon, I mean, a full moon coming in on Leo in February. So there's also this fire energy with Leo. So it's passionate, burning, determined. It's also your energy. So you've got this something that's really wanting to, to it's burning a hole in you. It's burning, it's, it's lighting your fire. It's making you want more than what maybe you want, maybe than what you have. The thing about Ariel though, Ariel is our earth energy, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. And remember, we still have, Mercury is in Capricorn, right? Yes. Pluto's still in Capricorn. Um, Uranus is going direct in Taurus. So there is some, you know, there's a lot of Taurus energy, money, job, career. So what happens with the Knight of Ariel, the Knight of Pentacles, is the Knight kind of takes a break, kind of takes a look. There's this opportunity that's really very exciting, very like, yes, I want to do this, but let's make, let's make sure that this is the right path for me. Let's make sure that, you know, I've negotiated the right amount of money, too. You know, the, the Knight of Ariel is good with that um, because there's many times, you know, myself included, I have started a job just to find out that somebody, because people talk, people are always talking, that, you know, somebody was hired after me making more money than me. So it's kind of like, well, say what? Um, so the Knight of Ariel is going to do that negotiation. The Knight of Ariel is going to make sure that you get the most the bit, most bang for your buck in many ways too. So if this is a job situation, I use that as an example. Um, so if this is a job though, and this is, I'm always telling you this, uh, just because you know, if it's something you want, you're really excited, you can say, oh, I love this. I, I, you know, I'm so excited to accept, but I do need to talk now about salary. What is the highest that you can offer? And they'll say, well, what? Or they might say, you know, I want to talk about salary. And they say, well, what is, what is it that you want? And you say, well, what is the range? What is the salary range on this? And, you know, I laughingly have told them, I want the most you're going to give. And you know what? That has worked. That sometimes works. So you, um, you're not saying no to the job. You're just saying, okay, let's talk about money. And, you know, if they're good business people, they will respect that. So the Knight of Ariel watches and waits, kind of plans things out, and when things get to be the way the Knight wants it to be, moves, okay? So trustworthy, understanding, devoted, and funny. There is so much to accomplish, make a very detailed plan, being watched over by someone kind. So there is a negotiation energy with this Knight of Ariel for you right now also. But now we have this major arcana. This major arcana, so this could be, if this is a job, and again, I use that as a, um, you know, just as an example, because like I said, Ariel Pentacles has that money energy to it. It's kind of like once you get everything going, and once you really feel like, okay, I've gotten all, a lot of my answers, if you're feeling called, if you're feeling called to make a switch, to make the promotion, to, to start a new business, you know, if you're feeling called, that part of that is a leap of faith. Part of that is about believing in yourself. Now, many times over when I see these two together, it generally means that, um, you know, you might be offered a promotion and you're just kind of saying, can I do it? Well, my sage is, yes, you can do anything. You can do anything. So if it is a promotion, um, don't doubt yourself. Now, if you don't want it, because you've got good hours, you've got good pay, they want to switch you from hourly to salary, and you're like, oh, no, no, no. That's totally different. But don't not do it because you don't think you can, okay? So zero is God's source energy. The leap of faith is the fool card. Archangel Metatron believed to have been Enoch before the flood. So here we go. Believe in yourself. Listen to your heart. And this is really important for you. Do what gives you joy. So you can be offered something. It doesn't mean you have to take it if it doesn't bring you joy. Okay? Okay. So this could also be something about moving. This could be getting a new space, a new house. So there, you know, there's that also. Um, in part, but, you know, 
But the thing about it is, believe in your abilities. Believe in yourself. Believe, you know, major arcana. So there's a very strong connection with God's source or whoever that is you call. Um, this is the beginning of a new journey. Anyway, next card is the Ace of Raphael. So we have a one. So we have a one, zero, zero, one, one new beginning again. Raphael is our water energy, our Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. Remember what I was talking about Pisces in the introduction. So it's fluid, emotional. It's very spiritual energy. It's something positive. It's an emotional bonding. It's an emotional growth. It's an emotional. So whatever this is, you know, you're thinking about it. You're being logical. There's the passion to do this. But there's also, oh, I've really wanted this opportunity. It could be a person. It could be a person coming into your life, too. But it's like, yes, I've really wanted this. Maybe you're, maybe somebody out there is a writer, an author, um, somebody very artistic. And you're, you know, you're being, you're being, you know, well, you know, let's publish or let's let's show your work. Um, so this has that very spiritual, yes, I really want this. A positive new emotional experience, fulfilling romantic relationships, deep and lasting spiritual insights. So it's an interesting energy. Believe, you know, like I said, if it's not, if you don't want to make a change, you don't have to make a change. You know, if what you're doing is, you know, if this is whatever, Whoever, whatever the relationship energy is all about. Um, but don't, don't not do it again because you don't think you can. Okay, how's that? But this is, there's movement here. There is, um, I love the Knight of Ariel because the Knight of Ariel, like I said, there's passion, but there's also a, okay, it has to make sense. It has to make sense. There's emotion. There's this, oh my goodness. So the leap of faith can also be a miracle energy that comes into your life that opens up a new door for you too. Okay, guardian angels, what do you have for my Sagittariuses? What do you have for our Sagittariuses, my adventurers, my... Yeah, sometimes you need to put a little bit of the brakes on, but that's okay. Uh, here we go. This one is reversed. Oh, the six of action. So... The six of action is the is six is a number of man. It's the energy you put into something. Action is fire energy. Again, it is your energy, Aries and Leo energy, passionate, burning, determined. What a wonderful experience for you. Your project is a total success, bringing awards, promotion, or other recognition for your efforts. Well done. If someone who can help you offers assistance, Know that this person is heaven sent and say yes. Wow, there's, there's, yeah, things, things are growing, things are moving, things are, you know, there's, there's opportunities coming all around you. Believe, I like it. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we've got here now from the fairies, angels and the fairies, angels and the fairies. Let's see. For my Sagittarius's, what do we have for our Sagittarius here? What do we have for our Sagittarius? Fairy of the Mystic Forest. Have we seen this? I don't know. You have the power and aptitude to make your dreams come true. I've been saying that. All you need now is commitment to make it happen. And that would be that would be another way to look at that night of Ariel. That, you know, once you once you really want, you know, once you really decide. You need to commit. Okay. that We all have a little problem with commitment, especially if it comes to us. It's like, well, I thought it would be easier, or I thought it would be easy. But, it's you know, life in itself is not easy. Okay, so are you ready to commit? I don't know. Here we go. Again, do what you feel is right with it. And um, it's an interesting energy, though, for you. Zero, one, six, six, one, zero. All right. Crystal or energy for my Sagittarius's. Titanium rainbow quartz. And this is, this is man and nature made. So awakening all chakras, ultimate manifestation, vibrancy. It is about a powerful shift. So is this a is this a commitment thing then? 
What is this all about, my Sages? You know, I love hearing about it, so give me some comments, please. Also, too, again, I'm going to ask you to please like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. It just, yeah, the, the algorithms really mess things up. Anyway, always, always know, my Sages, that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.